Hey, we back for another review of Sisters. Let's just jump right into it. We are on season six, episode 15. And again, I forgot to write down the name of the title. So we're just going to keep moving. I'm sorry I keep forgetting. Either way, um, at the end of last episode, um, we ran into Karen running into Zach and Fatima in the store with the baby Michael. I think his name is. They're getting some diapers and some things for him. And you can tell by the size of this kid that he is... Um, at the age where he should no longer be in diapers, but you know, neglect all that that different, all of that different stuff that's happening in this baby's life right now. He's not potty training, so they need to get what they need to do. They, they're getting things to get him through the night, and they'll figure out, you know, the situation with Heather or whoever needs to be contacted tomorrow. But for tonight, they need to get this baby washed and comfortable and all this good stuff. And of course, they run into Karen, so that is what we pick up at in episode fifteen. Um. We pick back up with Karen and Zach in the store, and she's questioning them, asking them who the baby is. Of course, she's been given attitude, you know, this whole season. Um, and she realizes she's looking at the baby. She's like, "Oh, that baby looks just like you. That's your son." Oh, was that the girl that was um asking, you know, accusing you of being the baby's daddy, whatever? So you took a DNA test, and it's been determined to be your your child. You know, all of these are presumptions that she's making while she's standing there, and she's mad that he's being a homemaker to Fatima. He's that's really her gripe currently and so um she tells him like listen i hope you treat our baby like that when my baby gets here um and then she she makes a kind of a point but you know sometimes when you have a good point it's convoluted by your 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 presentation and she was like listen i just need to know if you're gonna be a good dad so she's asking him, like hey are you gonna take care of the michael so you know little baby michael he's currently holding not really a baby he's like a toddler honestly and she's like are you gonna take care of him are you gonna be good to him or whatever whatever she was like yeah because i need to know because I want to know if you're probably taking care of my child. Um, I need to get a glimpse of how you're going to treat my child. And that's a fair question. That is a fair assessment. Um, however, your delivery and your timing convolutes your point. You know what I mean? Tell me if I'm making sense, right? So you want to see how this man is with children so that you can gauge how he's going to treat your child. Absolutely fine. That's understandable. However, right now ain't the time to gauge that because your emotions are very, very, very much high. So you're not going to make a fair assessment, um, which, you know, by the end of the conversation, you left with your face on the floor, but we're going to get to it. Um, not only that, I understand because in the, just the things that makes very good sense. Let me get my own personal business since, you know, I did that in the last review. I, when I was dating, child, I'm an old married lady now and I'm more dating for me, but when I was on the dating scene, I made presumptions about people how, by the way, that they treated their children. Not me. Because, you know, I'm grown. I can feel for myself. But, for example, if I'm dating a guy and he has children, if I don't um, appreciate how you treat your children, I want nothing to do with you. Does that make sense? So, if I see that you're a deadbeat to your child, well, hell, if we end up having a child, <laughs> what the hell is my child to expect? So, no, 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 no. So, that's, you know, a little bit of advice for the people that are still dating. I don't know, girl, ain't nobody's dating coach. Either way, um, I'm just telling my business. That is how I would gauge your um character. You, if you have children and you want to spend every waking second, moment, and hour with me, but none with your children, we have nothing to talk about, my boy. But, um... I can see why she needs to get she need that information. However, right now in this current time and place, like the baby is freshly rescued from a from a domestic situation, an abusive situation. So it's not the time to it's not gonna be a fair assessment. That's I saw I said all that to say. Um and so they're trying to walk away and she is following them to the checkout counter. Again, just being very annoying. Like while you had a point five seconds ago, your point is out the window because you're being an ass. So He's following them and they're trying to leave. And Fatima, um, no, Zach is like, listen, the child is waking up. I'm going to go ahead and take him to the car. And Fatima and um, Karen are still talking at the register. They're still having a conversation. And she tells Fatima, like, listen, if y'all going to have my baby, we need to make this cordial. And Fatima's like, I agree. I've already said that numerous, numerous times. So we're on the same page. And she says she needs to know that my child will be treated right. And again, Fatima tells her, like, I've already... I've already said that that will be the case. Like, you're reiterating the point that we've already all agreed upon. Like, I, I feel you. And then she tells, um, and so Fatima just pretty much breaks it down. And she was like, listen, all I can actually hope for you, Karen, is that you're going to be a better mother than Heather. Now, um, she tells her everything. She said, we just, we, and we just came from picking this child up. He's been abused. He's hungry. He's all of the, because Karen asked them, Karen said, hey, 
um, he's taking the baby to the car, but where's his car seat? And um, Fatima just, she kind of loses it. She doesn't have an attitude, but she goes, and goes ahead and gives Karen the full scope of what's happening. Like, yeah, okay, you're worried about a car seat, but we just went through something so traumatic with this child. A car seat is the last thing that's on our list of concerns. I know it ain't the safest option, but sometimes you live in a, a bad situation. You don't, you're not well equipped. You don't have all the tools. You don't have everything that you need. You just need to get gone. Somebody needed that little piece too. So you take that and put it in your back pocket. Um, and so she tells Karen, she's like, listen, this child's just been abused. He's been unfed. He's unwashed. He's been left home alone. We just pulled him out of a, an abusive situation. So forgive us. If a car seat is not at the, at the top of our list of things to do. And she was like, Suna, all I can hope for you is that you be a better mother than Heather. Just to tell like, listen, you are over here trying to gauge our parenting skills when we are physically demonstrating our selflessness when it comes to this child. Like, just chill, right? And I absolutely agree with, you know, how Fatima said it. Because sometimes it's time and place. But when somebody's like bugging you, bugging you, bugging you, after a while, you got you like, girl, I'm a dog back into a corner. I'm about to lash out. And so there was a, y'all forgive me if I'm going off on a tangent. But there was like a poem or something going around. And there was a teacher that was asking a child about a pencil and the child was like listen i had to get myself up to school i had to you know do all these different things before i even got to school today a pencil is the least of my words it's like a poem or something you'd have to look it up i don't know the gist of it but that always kind of resonated with me just because you know i'm not gonna get into my backstory girl because i'm not feeling bad for me but anyway um sometimes people focus on something that's so small you don't realize like when you back up and you step out of your own emotions and you look at the picture that's much bigger. The small thing that you that you bitching and you griping about don't matter. In the scenario, it would have been a pencil. In this case, it's a car seat. Like, save this child's life or worry about a car seat. Like the scale is unbalanced. So you it don't make sense in the grand scheme of things. And if you were if you were to calm down and listen to what somebody else has to say sometimes you will better gauge you'll be able to better gauge situations instead of just flying off the handle and um i understand that you know pregnancy hormones all that good stuff but you need to kind of be able to get your wits about yourself and you don't be you don't be doing that miss karen anyway um after fatima explains all that she tells him like listen unless you want me to return this child to this lady a car seat is the least of your words. She was like, listen, so do you want us to get him out of the situation or do you want us to get a car seat? Again, just painting the picture like, girl, out of all things, I don't give a damn about this car seat. We, we got the child secured and we're good to go. Now she, and she again reminds like, she, she again reminds, she again reminds Karen, like, hey, your child's going to be loved. Um, you don't got to worry about it. I've already said it and ain't no beef, ain't no problem. And just leaves her there with her face cracked on the floor. And that just did, that was fine. That was good enough for me because what else could I possibly say? I've already said the same thing a million times. I've told you, and I've demonstrated it now at this point. Like, we not going to talk about the same thing. Moving right along. Calvin gets home, and Maurice is sitting in there soaking. And um, he's kind of just evaluating his life. And he's trying to make, you know, the sense of everything that's going on. He's trying to rectify the situation for him and Sabrina. Um... And then he goes on to admit that he needs to think about why he keeps attracting the same type of broken people um in his instance it is um masculine present masculine presenting men that need to be fixed um and calvin tells him like listen you may just be re-traumatizing re yourself by way of you you worked really hard to try to save your dad and you could not and so you all you're always trying to save these people in relationships and he's like no you know i was keeping that happen and calvin reminds me like listen yeah your childhood trauma can still haunt you well into your adulthood. Um, definitely a good, you know, a good way to bring it home for, for Maurice and kind of show some compassion and get Maurice to kind of let that, let that funny, you know, diva attitude, demeanor or whatever he wants to present, let that down for just a little bit. Um, Calvin reminds him, like, listen, though you've made some kind of, you know, some mistakes in your dating choices or whatever, that you're still a good person and um, don't, you have you were trying to help him like you were legit trying to come from a good sincere place and trying to help Q and I don't want you to allow that to change you as a person. And I see, I I understand. Maybe it's the cynic in me. I, I understand what Calvin is saying, and it is it is coming from a well-to-do place. However, it's not. It's going to be 
hard for Maurice to not let that affect him as a person. And I'm not speaking from personal experience. I'm speaking from my experience being in close proximity to other people. So I'm trying to tell y'all what I need, what I know without telling people's business, right? Um, persons, people, no particular identifiers are similar to Maurice in action, continuing to see the best in people. I know they have the potential to be great um, over and over and over again. They find themselves in this loop of trying to fix people or trying to make people see the see, see how good they are um, to themselves. And the problem is, is you can see the good in people, but they don't see them. So there's no point in you dragging them along. I understand being of assistance, but after a while, it's okay to wash your hands. Again, I don't know who need, I don't know who need it, but um, it's okay to wash your hands of a situation and not drag people to their blessing. You know, sometimes people are just where they are, and it's okay to leave them where they are. You don't have to make that your make that your case to be a hero or to see the good or to save people or be of assistance because when it's when it when it's draining, you don't got nothing else to give once you've given it all to that person. Now you find another person and you're doing the same thing. Like girl, it's taxing. And I'm gonna let I'm gonna leave that right there. I'm gonna leave that where it's at. All right, so that was just a little sweet moment. They exchanged some I love yous and just a sentiment, sentimental moment between um Maurice, Maurice and Calvin. So yeah. Zach and Fatima get home and Fatima starts to get baby Michael undressed for a bath. So you know, get him get him bathed, get him settled for tonight because he um reeks of kind of being left in his own um, bodily fluids and all that stuff from neglecting. She sees something on his back, which we can only presume to be like welts or, you know, indications of prior abuse, all that good stuff. And I'm not going to hold you. I'm not going to hold you. I was in here boo-hoo, boo not crying at that scene. Like, it just tore me to pieces. I know it's TV. I know I shouldn't have been crying because it's just TV. But I was in here crying like a dog, baby. I was, I felt, so I'm smiling because I'm, girl, what I'm not going to do is cry this camera. But it hurt, it hurt my feelings to see that little baby. And this little baby that's acting, he's doing a very good job of like being sad, kind of portraying like his, his reservations. And you'll see that in this episode as well, but we'll get to when we get to that part of the review. But it, it, it definitely teared me up, you know, just kind of having seen similar neglect in children like again i'm trying to i'm trying to give y'all what i'm giving y'all without giving y'all all people's tea you know what i'm saying that's not my not my story to tell but um being a first-hand witness to like things like that that happen to children it's hard to remain the adult in the situation it's hard to step out of your emotions and not want to beat the hell out of somebody just the long and the short. It, it's hard to not want to beat on nobody's ass when they're beating on children. Because children are helpless. Like, what the fuck can a five-year-old do to you for you to do all this? That, that's that's just... I'm going to leave that alone. Because I tend to get real pissed about stuff like that. So, we're just going to move on. Y'all with Y'all still with me? All right. Danny tiptoes in her in the apartment from Galavan out with the girls and the guys all night. Preston was barely asleep. He, he sits up and he's like, hey, I was waiting for you to get home. Um, he's finally come down off his super duper duper high that he was on the day before. Um, and he tells her like, "Listen, I ain't never smoking that shit again. Don't give it to me no more." He's only he only had one puff, but Mister Sir cannot handle it, and that's okay. Now you've never tried it. It's your first time trying it. It was too much for your little system. Now you you, you can say now you got a t-shirt. You can just say you did it, just to say you did it. All right. She tells him about Andy's blind date, and of course she didn't tell the full story. Um. He compliments her on the rose in her hair that old boy gave her. Of course, she did not tell him that that's who it came from or whatever. She's in the bathroom getting ready for bed. And um, Mr. Sir from the date sends her a text message. And she's smiling at her phone, child. We, we can presume that it's Mr. Sir from the date. And Preston shows up at the door. He's standing by her. And he kind of jolts her. Jolt, you know, startles her. And she's like, well, why are you behind me? I thought he saw, but I guess he didn't see what the message was. And now he wants to know why she all smiles and you know, he didn't dig too deep. He just kind of chalks it up to her um, on the phone with the girls. But you can kind of see what she's kind of like 
low key like hiding the situation, which is problematic in my opinion. Because if it was if it's innocent, why are you hiding, girl? I'm just saying, girl. I was on a, I was on the I was on a date to make sure my girl was all right. His friend showed up to the date as well to make sure he was okay. We all just ended up parlaying. Um, yeah. But, you know, now that you get, like, oh, hope you made it home, Texas, or whatever it is that you're smiling about on that phone, it's giving there's more to it than that. But also, hold your presses. I don't blame you. Because pressing is only about two or three days back in the back in the apartment, right? And you just sent Miss Lil uh, Elizabeth, the girl that she was going to propose to, you just sent her back to Chattahoochee. And you was kind of talking to us at the same time, too. So, actually, we all just kind of dating, right? I don't know. I don't know. Y'all tell me what y'all think. I ain't quite sorted through that one just yet, but I don't think she all the way right. And I don't think she all the way wrong. That, that's what I would say. Um, Karen shows up at Zach's house, and I, girl, when when <laughs> when Fatima opened the door, I was like, man, here we go with this shit again. But she came with good intentions. She didn't come with no smoke, and I was proud of Karen for only about the second time in the series. Um, she showed up with the car seat and a, and some groceries. Um, and she apologized apologized for her assumptions and kind of making a scene at the store. Um, which is commendable. I, I'm hoping that she she did it, you know, because she really felt bad or she really wanted to make amends and not because she felt guilty for being wrong about her assumptions. That would be my hope. But um, she also knows, you know, some of Zach's background. And she was like, "Listen, I know that Zach went a lot of, went through a lot of the same stuff." You know, so here's some stuff for the baby. Make sure y'all taking care of that child. You know, I, I, I'm sorry. Fatima's like, you know, again, no problems. We're good. Would you like to come inside? And she was like, listen, I will give Karen this little piece of dust. In this moment, she showed emotional maturity because she said, no, you know, maybe someday, just not today. Like, I'm still fresh off my emotions. Just I can't do it right now. I look forward to a day where I can see you and Zach together and not feel some kind of way, but I'm not there yet. And that's all that you can ask for. That's reasonable. That's fair. That is human emotion. And it works for everybody. So, you know, I I, I definitely appreciated that from her. Um, and she, she also reminds me, like, whatever y'all do, however this goes, please y'all just take care of that baby, you know, keep him safe, um, and all that good stuff. So that was, I, that was commendable on Karen's part. That, that's I give her one hand clap of praise on that. All right. So the next day she shows up to Karen. She shows up to Andy's house. And Andy's a little standoffish because we don't really know what kind of Karen we're gonna get. Is if we're gonna get the devil, we're gonna get a nice Karen. We don't know. But she goes on to apologize to Andy and all is well. And you know, they're just gushing over the baby. She's starting to show all that good stuff. Um she's starting to sound and act a lot more like herself. And um, she tells Andy that she broke things off with Aaron because it's best that she's alone. However, she is afraid to do so. And that was another uh, poignant. I think that's how you poignant. That's another poignant message that I got from the episode. Um, because like she said, she did break it off with Aaron. Um, and it was best that she is alone in this time so she can kind of process, process and get through everything that she needs to get through. However, she is afraid to be alone. That's what I, I gained from the sex segment. And um, I can understand. I can understand not from my own perspective because I've already done the work and I enjoy, you know, being by myself and enjoying my own company. But I do know people and have been in conversation and in an interaction with, with people and seen like observed people and realized like okay girl you have been in a relationship with people since you've been able to date like you're 17 you got a boyfriend you're 19 like you're from relationship to relationship to situationship to all the ships right and sometimes I will not speak for every single situation sometimes people are always in relationship with somebody because they don't know how to be alone or they're afraid to be alone or they, you know, all the, the aloneness that comes with it or they never bothered to be alone to know who they are independent of somebody. Um, and so I understand how, you know, she could feel that way. However, you got to work that out with somebody. You got to work that out with yourself. You got to work that out with a therapist because what you're going to do is you're going to find yourself continuing to kind of glean and take in people 
just for the mere fact that you don't want to be alone. And that's not going to fare you well because you just end up in things instead of making conscious decisions to be with people, to be around people, all that good stuff. Again, this is my opinion. This is just my 30 some 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 years of experience and just kind of what I've observed over the years and or witnessed and or experienced. So y'all take that, do with it what you will. Um, Andy offers along her the money to fix up the shop since she um Torp Torb Zach's check. And again, you know, Andy's coming through for her girl all as well. Um she goes on, Karen goes on to tell her about everything that happened the night before with Zach and the baby and Fatima and all that good stuff. And Andy's like, so y'all just talk like two regular adults. Like, that's great. Like, progress is progress. And so, yeah, you know, Karen lets her know, like, you know, nothing happened. Nothing went down. We're good. Um, And then, you know, so they're just swapping stories. And Andy tells her about the, the date the night before, lets her know that everything went well. And about the um the bus incident. And the thing that I've seen as it relates to Andy recapping this date is... Everybody's fine and dandy until they talk about the bus. Like when they, as soon as they hear the bus, bus is like a trigger for everybody. Everybody's like, huh, you on the bus? Like, girl, the bus? Ew. Like clutching their pearls and kind of, you know, turning their nose up at the bus. And I think what we're missing is, like in this in this segment, Andy called it a cute disaster because of course it didn't go as planned, but the effort was there. You know, the everything kind of went off without a hitch. We just didn't end up at the destination that we wanted to end up at and that just kind of gave me like not everything has to be perfect like yeah you know in the day i don't have no business talking about dating girl because when i was i wasn't no good at it so again take it with a grain of salt um <laughs> not everything has to be perfect and perfect in dating because nothing is going to be perfect in life in love in relationship so you know i'm glad that andy didn't hold it against her because it didn't go as expected um and that, that's just what I wanted to say about that. Moving right along. 